Alright, let's pick her up. And get in at the negotiation. Hello. This is, for me, an unexpected video. I wasn't going to put one up until a little bit later. Um, but something unexpected happened a couple of days ago. I had a phone call from a friend of mine, a colleague who I used to work with, and uh, he said, Dave, he said, um, will you come up and uh, to my home and have a look at something because I think you'll be very interested in it. Well, um, <laughs> I knew it was to do with uh, with radio because he uh, or or electronics or something like that. But when I got there, I was astounded because what he had was an Avo valve tester, um, Mark One, uh, and he also had lots and lots of paperwork. And the paperwork involved its traceability back to Marconi. Now Marconi was born in 1874 and died in 1937. Incidentally, when Marconi died in 1937, the BBC held a two minutes transmission suspension uh, in honour of his death. Um, now Marconi, during that period, uh, obviously was... Um, very much involved in, in, in trying to transmit radio signals, long distance radio signals. But what the interesting thing was about my visit to uh, Trevor was this, and I'll just read a little bit to you. Um, George Stephen Kemp, and he, this research is ongoing, uh, was born in 1857 and um, he died in 1933. He was an electrician and instructor with the Royal Navy. Um, and then uh, the post office where his, his boss was William Priest. Um, now William Priest put George uh, to work alongside Marconi as his assistant um, and from July 1896 Kemp devoted himself to wireless telegraphy um, thus becoming Marconi's inseparable assistant. This is just amazing stuff. I haven't been in to the details of it, uh, but that hurt me right away. From July, um, uh, he moved from the post office to the f fun, um, foundling company Marconi Co., where he marked, where he worked as a first assistant for the next 36 years. Um, the first wireless transmission across the Atlantic, of course, as we know, was the letter S and it was transmitted from Cornwall to St John's in Newfoundland and a distance of 2,000 miles. People said at the time that radio waves couldn't be transmitted more than 200 miles because of the curvature of the Earth. What they hadn't taken into consideration was the ionosphere where the signals would go up and bounce back and that's exactly what happened to Marconi's transmission. Now, okay, so I have lots and lots of information here Lots of it has to be um, looked at and analysed and traced, but it may just be that I have a valve tester here um, that was used by Marconi's assistant um, uh, and uh, all those many, many years ago. Well, this is the machine. It's a Mark I um, AVO valve tester. And it's in two parts. One is the meter and the other part is the, uh, the, the the machine where you set up all the particular readings um, for the various valves that you're going to test. This one has been upgraded, as you can see, apart from all the octal and various older valve bases, uh, it has been updated to take um, some of the newer valves as well. So uh, that is the instrument and with it um, is the uh, original manual for it. So let's have a look at that. AVO Vog Tester Type 160 Working Instructions. Uh, I just think this is amazing um, and uh, I, it hasn't been, I haven't plugged it in or done anything with it um, but uh, it's just an amazing machine to actually look at and own from all those years ago. The valve tester was made by the Automatic Coil Winder and Electrical Equipment Company Limited, based in Winder House, London, SW1, and this 
um, then became the Avo uh, Company. Um, and probably was made somewhere between 1935 and 1937. Not exactly sure what the date was. Other documents that came with this machine are, are these. Um, first of all there's the AVO uh, valve manual and uh, this is the original manual for it. AVO Limited, Avco, AVO, AVO Sid House um, Vauxhall Bridge Road, London, SW1. And this is the original manual. And even here it says name and address of sender, um, AVO Volve data manu manual, uh, suggestions or amendments. And um, in the book itself, uh, it covers all the various, um, the manual there, no date on it, but it covers all the various. Uh, um, equipments and this is the one that we're talking about down the bottom here uh, so it's an amazing book and uh, covers virtually everything uh, you need to know about the testing equipment including lots of adverts at the time there's um, uh, pin diagrams uh, for standard pin connections and it covers um, virtually everything you want you, you could cover in that and the rest of the book is all the valves uh, that um, uh, of that vintage uh, and all the equivalent valves including um, uh, military valves uh, as well and all the readings and everything else and all the settings for the valve tester so that's just an amazing book well that's it really for um, this video um, as I say it's just the first video in a series that I hope to make once I've traced the the the, uh, the history of, of this wonderful valve tester and um, put together some of the history of the people that were involved with it. Oh, well, by the way, um, no, uh, um, Marconi, when he won the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1909, um, which was probably the highlight of his career, though he worked with other people, um, it must have been an amazing moment for him and all those people who work with him to make that first radio transmission. One extra thing is I have this um, CD here for the Avil original two panel valve tester and that contains uh, most of the information uh, in the manual and it's uh, Avil manual uh, issue 11 1958 so I have yet to fire this one up and look at it but uh, that contains so much information for that particular valve tester. Well, um, sorry if I was overexcited about this. I know a lot of you won't be because it's not everyone's um, cup of tea, but uh, it is amazing and uh, I'm going to share more of this wonderful thing with you um, a, 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 a little bit later. It will be now after Christmas um, and we'll be having a look at some of the valves that uh, came with it and I think I may have 50, 60 valves of, of this vintage. If any of you can share any information or add any information about this piece of equipment, I'd be pleased to hear from you. Uh, I'll put some uh, footnotes down below this video. But if anyone can help or add to this or correct me in any way, then that will be absolutely great. Again, thank you for watching and as always, take care. Alright, stick it up. Get in at the negotiations.